Hello everybody, it's Wednesday night and we uh, talk Western Province Club Rugby. It's JP Nordier and as you know, every Wednesday we take a look at what's happening in the world of Western Province Club Rugby. Uh, before we get the ball rolling, so to speak, and when it does roll, because it's a little bit oblong, it tends to bounce all over the show, which is exactly how it happens on the show. We bounce around a little bit, but we still keep talk talking rugby, even though during this water crisis people think there's no rugby, but there's still a lot of rugby to talk about. We find it, we make it happen. Uh, big thanks to Hisense, of course, on board with Cape Rugby TV as the official technical partner. Score Energy Drinks. You can see the score. Uh, little can here, all right? Score Energy Drinks on board with Western Province Rugby is, of course, uh, uh, also involved with the Western Province Club Rugby Sevens. Um, and uh, for those of you that uh, need to get your paint supplies sorted out, Dulux Maitland at number 30 Cooper Road. They've got all the paint specs that you need. In fact, they will spec your venue for you and save you a lot of money and tell you exactly how much uh, paint it is that you need for your specific job. They've got a fantastic Dulux range there with some great prices. And of course, Color Tone, your uh, timber treatment specialist available at um, pretty much any hardware store uh, in and around uh, South Africa. So Color Tone, all of them on board with um, Cape Rugby TV and recently joined us also SaveSASport.com. Um, go there for any of your apparel uh, products that you might need. Use the coupon code KBRUGBYTV for, those, for that 20% um, uh, discount. All right, we'll talk more about There you see the logo behind me right now. Save SA Sport. We'll talk more about that a little bit later during the course of the show. But let me introduce you to my panel uh, this, um, this evening. Um, before we took a, take a look at one of our highlight games, which is, of course, St. George's up against Robertson. Um, uh, Junaid Murat. Junaid, welcome to, um, back Thank to you. Rugby TV. Thanks for having me here. It's good to be back. Yeah, and it's always a lecker to have you guys on the show because even though we don't have a lot of games, we're still talking rugby on all sorts of levels. Remember we sat here for half an hour before the show and just kept talking. Um, Renzo Botman. Uh, <laughs> all right, folks, for some other reason, I keep doing this. I don't know what it is. It's a, it's a mental block. London Julius. I was, good evening, everybody. Good evening, JP. Good evening. I was yeah, waiting man. tonight. I was waiting for this to happen and to be recorded because it happens every day <laughs> on a regular basis. I'm glad I've got it on. I, I hope that this is going to be recorded. Oh, it's word. definitely recorded. That's, yeah, all right. that's brilliant. It was I'll bound take, to happen. I'll take that one on the chin. Don't worry. I nearly called Junaid Shukri. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for some other reason, between you and Renzo Bortman, <laughs> who is uh, sitting behind our production suite at the moment, for some other reason, I don't know why it, it is. It, must, like, it must be the air, <laughs> Jake. It's got to be the air. I think there's the nothing air? else. There's nothing else. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> uh, it, 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 it keeps happening. Um, right. We, we're going to take a look at the, um, one of our friendlies, which is, of course, um, uh, St. George's, which traveled up to um, Robertson over the weekend to go play against the Robertson um, in, in a friendly there. But before we take a look at that, um, Lyndon, um, otherwise known as Renzel, um, <laughs> why, why travel St. George's, why travel out of Cape Town to go and play against Robertson? So there's, a, there's as most of the people, most of the club rugby uh, fans know that there was, there's a moratorium placed on all fixtures within the boundaries of the Western Province uh, by the city through via the Western Province Union. So the clubs had to find ways to, to play and to complete their fixtures. Um, also, it's sort of just the beginning. So most clubs are trying to get through what we spoke about last week in the grid. Mm. Um, and then as soon as that sort of hits, hits home, I think the friendlies traveling that far won't become those. So guys are trying to keep things active. Yeah, keep things active. But I think the grid will more and more, as the, as the pre-season sort of gets towards when the league was supposed to start, I think that grid will become more of a reality yeah. for most clubs. So we'll take a look at the grid a little bit later. Um, Junaid, we're also going to talk about you guys at Vineyards. You're playing against Roses this weekend. Yeah. So pretty much the same kind of exercise as uh, St. George's has gone through here. Uh, we'll, we'll touch base on that a little bit later. But folks, we know you all want to see rugby. Uh, so let's catch up now with the first half of this friendly uh, St. George's again, Robertson in Robertson.
Well, welcome back, everybody. Okay, so we see our first game there. And it's pretty much like we would have seen in any other season, <coughs> normal season, excuse me, <coughs> where we would have seen some friendlies. And uh, Lyndon, just looking at that there, um, as a first half highlight, so at any, on any other given day, we would have seen first half highlights that looked very much the same. We were asking the same questions. Yep. Um, probably we would have focused a little bit more about the rugby and, and so on. But before we get into the rugby itself, um, do you think that the players are taking the field um, in a more casual manner and just going, ah, oh, it's just a game for the sake of a game? Or are they treating it still as if this is a friendly with a purpose? Mm -hmm. This is a friendly with a purpose because we've got to get the team together, we've got them to start uniting because we've got big fixtures coming up. I think, I think yes, some clubs definitely has got that uh, mentality because like, like, I, like we said last week or the week before, at any time this moratorium could be lifted and, you know, uh, the union could say, yeah. guys, the fixtures going, it's going to be two weeks out or three weeks out. And then you as a club or you as a coach and players, you need to be on par. You need to be where you wanted to be at the fixture start of the so normal the time. So the St. George's boys took yeah, that yeah. game seriously. Yeah, no, we, we took it very seriously. Yeah. That's full strength team or the entire club win. All four, all four teams on the 23rd team, second team and first team. The entire coaching staff complement, our executive uh, membership was there, supporters, there was two buses going through. I yeah. think there was, so it was really, it wasn't, it wasn't just like, oh, it's a nice outing for, for us. Um, but it was it was more a case of, of finding finding that groove as a as a club as like you said yeah, yeah. like any other so first as a you know, let's bring you let's bring you into picture then if we talk rugby mm -hmm. and assuming this is a friendly and they're preparing for a few big games coming up what do you make of the first half well look it's it's as uh, obviously we don't see the Wolland clubs too often here so uh, it was quite competitive and you know the the guys you could see they did take it seriously. Yeah. Um, quite a big crowd out in in Robertson, uh, so you could see it wasn't just taken as a as a you know sort of a friendly. It was actually quite competitive, and you know St George's guys look like they've had quite a good preseason. Uh, <laughs> We've been flipping a few tires yeah. and we've been <laughs> carrying tires. a few logs yeah. and, and yeah. running with running the guys on the, the back beach and, and running on the beach. So yeah. I think there's, I think most clubs actually have been taking on the uh, uh, sort of accepting or sort of partaking in, in the whole well, function well with the drought training. i think most fields that we're running on is like running on the beach <laughs> yeah you're gonna start getting if you fall yeah you'll feel it's like tall yeah <laughs> i think it's a little bit harder than running yeah. on the beach. Get a couple of little bit yeah. let's take a look folks let's take a look at the second half highlights
Welcome back, everybody. Um, second half highlights there from the um, friendly match. Robertson against St. George's kindly brought to you by Score Energy Drinks. Um, remember, a little bit later in the show, you can win yourself a case of Score Energy Drinks. Keep your mobile phone handy. You're going to need to SMS the word SCORE to a, a, a short code number. All right, the final result there, 31 points to 16 um, uh, with a win for Robertson. Um, Junaid, looking at the, the guys from Robertson, they certainly don't look like they've... Uh, just come out of the woodwork they look like a class outfit I and mean, we saw some massive hits there as well yeah look at um they Borland league is supposed to start i think on the 10th of march which is a month before us so these guys have been busy for quite a while um i think the pro uh, clubs within western province are you know just getting going and it's quite hot out in robertson uh, so you know i assume those guys are a bit fitter than what our guys are and you know it looks like they don't stop running either yeah. you know they play 80 minutes non-stop and you know, our guys are getting into the beginning of the season, so those so guys must a, have... Would you say, uh, uh, Lennon, would you say they've had a couple of friendlies? I think they, they had a couple, like two or three friendlies before this one. Also, uh, traditionally and historically, your um, Bulan League uh, players are also more conditioned much better because their conditions are much harsher. Their playing conditions are much harsher than ours. So I think um, seeing the way that the guys break tack first time tackles so with, with ease, I think um, it just it just sits well that the uh, Bolan League is a much stronger. I think they're a bit, bit more competitive, but also uh, just the timing of the two seasons that are, you know, Bolan is already three, four games into their preseason, and it's the start of, of our of our preseason as well, yeah. 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 Well, they certainly look like they've yeah. uh, they've been playing together for quite a bit. Uh, well, we're probably going to have to start focusing on some of the, the Bolan teams if we've got all these uh, friendlies where our guys are traveling out so we're gonna have to get to know some of the coaches and captains and, and managers of the teams that are are kindly hosting the the, the facilities but incidentally i mean we talk about boerland um nnk will be traveling to saldana by this weekend to go and play there in fact we might shoot that game as well um to go give a bit of coverage we're going to talk about uh, uh, um, vineyards up against the roses over the weekend but um, it's not just on the one side. There's the West Coast as well, and we know some teams are going up to SVD. I think. I think what what this the this, the more we go into this crisis mode or moratorium period, I think uh, the silver linings are sort of showing itself. I think Poland clubs and Western Province clubs will work more closer together now. I think these clubs will find a solution, yeah. not just playing wise, but I think also just to grow numbers at the club and just have. A, a, a strong rugby player at every club and I think this, this, sh this should become irrespective if the, the crisis lifts or the water becomes a, a, a non-issue anymore or yeah. a less of an issue I think uh, this is definitely good for the relationship between the two unions well it's, 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 certainly a, yeah. it's certainly a, uh, fantastic to see the mm -hmm. club guys the guys at ground level the administrators at club level yeah. coming up with with creative ideas so you know hats off to the to the club guys that are, are, are showing that sort of leadership. So, you know, well done. Folks, when we come back after the ad break, we'll catch up with the Robertson captain, uh, Johan Stefanis, and then a little bit later, we'll speak to their coach, John Boyson. Get down to Dulux Maitland for color matching and free assessments, where we meet all your paint and contract requirements. We offer fast tinting turnaround time, free delivery and on-site assessments tailor-made to your contract or domestic specifications. Our staff are highly skilled at writing site specs to help you offer your client the best service. Our Dulux Rock Grip range is cost-effective and comes with a seven-year guarantee on all Dulux Rock Grip products. Visit us at 30 Kuburg Road, Maitland, and you could win a contractor's trailer valued at 15,000 Rand. Color Tone is to wood what a good moisturizer is to skin. Tried and tested, Color Tone is the ideal timber treatment for all timber. From windows to doors, decks to floors, chairs to stairs, Color Tone is your timber treatment of choice. When you see what a great job Color Tone does with wood, you may be tempted to use it on your skin, but don't. Ask for Color Tone at your nearest hardware store. Preserving your wood, protecting our children. Color Tone, the ultimate lead free timber treatment for all wood. Uh, welcome back everybody it's cape rugby tv and it's wednesday night and uh, never fear for those of you who think that water restrictions is killing sport well cape rugby tv is doing its very best to keep sport in the in the western cape alive certainly from a rugby perspective um one way that we will be able to keep um keep things going for the clubs is to keep talking about the clubs 
So please share any information that you might have. If you want to tell us what your plans are to get around the water restrictions, you want to share with us any of your ideas of how you're going to keep uh, rugby active at your club, um, share with us any uh, uh, potential fixtures, and we will keep talking about the clubs and the players and the administrators at the clubs and even the fans if you just keep letting us know. And to do that, you can go to our Facebook page, www.facebook.com, or remember, you can use the hashtag, hash WP Club Rugby. Uh, we catch up now with the Robertson captain, um, Johan Stefanis. Um, the zone was a bit warm, and the zone was a bit warm, and so it was a bit more important, and the zone was a bit more important, and the water was a bit more important. Um, Um, uh, Johan Stefanis there is, of course, the captain of Robertson, folks. And for those of you that have just joined us and you're wondering um, uh, how come it is that we're uh, speaking to um, a player from Robertson. Well, Robertson Club um, f kindly enough opened their doors to St. George's over the weekend, knowing that uh, there's water restrictions here and the clubs desperately wanted to find a way to play rugby. Um, but, um, um, Junaid... Um, listening to what Johannes Johannes saying there, on the Robertson side though, for them this friendly is as important as it is for our guys. He's talking there about trying to make it to the Gold Cup. We normally talk about Western Province sides trying to make it to the Gold Cup or wherever it is that they originally the Community Cup. Um, but if we just flip the script here and we're looking at it from a Robertson Robertson perspective, right now for them they're a few days out out of the out from starting their league season. They've also got some some serious goals. Yeah, look, I think I think they start on the tenth of March, and uh, from what he said, there is they ended second last year, so obviously they won the top, and they've got Gold Cup aspirations, and uh, we know how competitive that that Poland league is. Yeah, and I mean these guys are obviously working hard, and 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 they've they they into their season. I mean they. They're well, the towards the is, end of their preseason, so they're going full out now. Well, I'm, I'm going to say, you say that rather casually, we know how competitive the Buonant League is. The reality is, I don't really know how competitive <laughs> the Buonant League is. Yeah. You know, you're, yeah. you're filling me yeah. in on information yeah. here that I didn't know before. I didn't know Robertson yeah. was like number one or two in the Buonant League, and we know yeah. that Buonant's got a massive organization. Yeah. Um, uh, so, let me throw it back at you then. Yeah. Tell me a little bit more for those, Lennon, maybe yeah. you know, yeah. how competitive is the Borland League? Uh, the Borland League is very competitive in terms of they've got a bit more challenges to face. They travel a lot bigger distances. Um, we all know that uh, the Borland uh, Union stretches quite far. Um, but I think what, what is also makes it more competitive is the Borland uh, Union or the amateur side of Borland um, are, isn't, isn't afraid to pick players out of, out of the club structure. So you find that these guys uh, often play um, in the Borland jersey quite more often than yeah. in the Western Province. Well, they uh, probably so don't have the budget the necessarily budget, yeah. to buy players yeah. from, well, that, that well, too, yeah. from Saracens yeah. or anything. <laughs> but then, but then they're also uh, the players itself, you know, over the years have grown. Uh, have grown to, to sort of match and match up with each other uh, in terms of strength. Yeah. And I think that, that um, Robertson, Westbank, uh, Darling, uh, all these clubs, they, they are quite strong in terms of the competitive nature at the club. And then also just, just trying to use the resources that they have. Like I was saying to Junaid in the, in the ad break, um, the businesses in, in, in these areas aren't afraid to invest into these clubs. So you find that the chairman at the beginning of the season will have an X amount of money to plow into a gym contract for all of his players or, uh, you know, some uh, um, kit, well, that's that, an that kind of thing. That, you that's know? an interesting scenario in terms yeah. of the world of sports sponsorship yeah. is that um, certainly you probably would find that any business in the area in, in, in the, uh, call it the rural areas or the wider, wider areas, they would be very dependent on their customers and those customers come from this from their yeah, um, yeah. proximity and would not be coming from 50 or 100 or 200 kilometers away necessarily so their first priority and the reason it's obviously a good idea to invest which we what we keep saying here in cape town as well is invest close to home local mm -hmm. business invest and then clearly with the outlying areas you don't have a choice you better invest yeah. locally i mean like like you know what janet was saying was that uh, remondis was one of the big sponsors 
at 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 uh, at Robertson, Robertson. At Robertson, yeah. So this is a wholesale place. Um, yeah. You know, you have you have a business like that that invests into into a club. You've got 80 players plus their wives, their mother, their father, their children, yeah. their family, the guys that work. They all want to go back. They all migrate towards. So it's, it's a cycle that they complete. It's a circle, yeah. And, and it's right. You're yeah. saying, you know, like we, like you were saying, yeah. that that um, uh, clubs or the the businesses in, in in our union should definitely take a. a a page out of the book out of the bull and uh, businesses look after local clubs yep. you know yeah. your thoughts look they i think um i might be wrong but it, it might be a bit easier in terms of you look at okay robertson there's probably two clubs yeah. you go to ashton there might be one or two clubs you go to montague so you know the the it's the dynamic. area is smaller but yeah. there's one club as opposed to you know the wider cape town area even paul we've got like 15 16 clubs there if you go to strand helderberg you've got you know, quite eight or nine clubs in that area. So those guys are very community focused. The Oaks all work together. You know, they probably work at those uh, companies and those businesses that are plowing back. Yeah. So so it becomes easier, but so from the dynamics the, are different. The probably dynamics are a bit Apple different Kong, to, Kong, to yeah. the Western Cape. Yeah, I mean, like the Western Province League. But I think I still think that the model is, is the same in terms yeah. of what, what, what we were saying at the seminars or the, the media and, and sponsorship seminars a few years back is the shop around the corner is the shop that's close to your field. And I mean, that shop yeah. might can might only be able to sponsor you 10,000 Rand for the season. But I mean, if you go to five different shops, each give you 10,000 for the yeah. season, that's 50,000 50, Rand. Yeah. Another reason why up, it is that up. you need to have players who play at your club who come from the community yeah. because those players, your club will shop at that club. If the sponsor around the corner finds out that the people who he's sponsoring don't live in his neighborhood, well, he's probably got less reason to sponsor the club because you're not going to get the business. Exactly. That's one of the reasons, again, why community sponsorship model, we believe, needs to be proximity based or in fact the playing model needs to be proximity based but we'll talk more about that um, during the course of the season we're certainly not giving up on the season at Cape Rugby TV we intend to keep talking about club rugby so if you're a club out there never fear Cape Rugby is going to keep the the wheel turning so to speak let's catch up now with Robertson um, coach John Boyson Ja, zeker. St. Jordan is nooit een makkelijke Spanje. We zijn november ijs gespeeld. Ik ben tevreden uh, op die stadium van die jaar waar we ons voorbereiden. Ja, ze nog klompen goed wat we moeten doen. En aan gaan werken als een span. Dat is niet zeker goede elementen, maar dat kan je niet voor 80 minuten houden. Zo kan het beter. Ja, zeker. Ik ben tevreden. Ja, zeker. Die seizoen is lang. Gewoon spelen, dat is 12. Uh, 12 spannen of 10 spannen in, 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 in die lichaam speel twee keer in elkaar. So, die, die, seizoen, die seizoen kan lang raar. So, als er één overseer moet ons, moet ons gaan diep delf in, dan moet die volgende op diezelfde level kan weer. So, alles als we plaatsen van ons open. En dat die insinking wees in die Spanje moet eindelijk een verbetering wees. So, ja, ik denk dat we genoeg diepte daar. Ja, ik geloof zo. Ja, zoals we hadden nog gezegd, we zitten in die finale gespeeld. We want to, uh, we want to go one bigger, one, one better. We uh, wil in de finals win, we wil graag gaan, compete, uh, gaan spelen in de Gold Cup en niet net gaan deelnemen in de Gold Cup, we wil graag in de Gold Cup gaan winnen. So, dat is ons target voor dit jaar. We hebben dit laatste jaar recht gekregen, maar, maar één beter, dat is dat wat ons goal is voor dit jaar, zeker. Ach, dit is een van, van ons grote assets. Dit is niet een van ons borgen nie. Dit is een van ons grote baten in, in Robertson, dat is een gemeenschapsclub. En, en, en ik geloof eraan dat als we, als we, als we die, die skare, die klom mensen achter ons gaan, die, dan was het... Dan was het die moeilijk, want hulle, hulle, hulle sit ons op een ander level. Je zal zien dat het nationale jelde is van de Robertson, die ook is. So we seem to face the same challenges wherever we go, whether it be in Cape Town, in a, in a fantastic city, or whether it be in a rural area where there's fantastic communities that are pulled together, we seem to face the same challenges. Do you know, if you just listen to uh, what John Boyson was saying there, uh, there's the coach. Um, in fact, the, even the coach understands how important it is to have local fans there. Yeah, look, they, it looks like they pull the half of Robertson to that game. I think the other club in Robertson pulls the other half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and look, it's also, uh, uh, the dynamics is a bit different because... Uh, it's easier. No offense to people in Robertson, but what is there to do in Robertson on a Saturday afternoon other than maybe go to the rugby? Whereas if you're in the Cape Metropole or, you know, the Oaks are going to the beach, they're going, you know, it's a bit tougher out here, but uh, yeah, credit but to them, they're, they're actually the drawing that, was, that, the, the, that, the point, yeah. The, the thing that I was trying to get at there was, um, um, don't you think that it's a, it's a, it's, it's a breath of fresh air uh, or, or that the coach himself yeah. 
you know, because, I mean, we tend to think that coaches only think about win the game, play the game, mm. win the league. You know, leave the fan interaction, mm. turning it into an event, um, leave that up to the, 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 the club manager or the chairperson and so on, which it is. But it, it's good to hear a coach talking about how important it is. And we've got many club coaches in Western Province that have adopted that attitude. So that's fantastic. But it's good to hear that even outside of, of where we've had a fairly educated process here in Cape Town, um, that, that coaches are talking the same language. Look, he is, obviously he's a community man. And uh, that helps because... Uh, you know, he's, he's among the crowd, he lives among them, his family, friends, etc. And once again, this is something that I also believe in, is that try and keep your own, uh, you know, players, coaches, uh, management from, you know, that stems from the club, you know, and there's generations of uh, yeah. those people within the club. Because obviously now we're buying coaches from all over the place and that coach doesn't necessarily know what's going on in that community or what's good for the community. Yeah. Well, there's the thing, I mean, we talk again I about the Boerland, um, the, the, yeah. the, the side of things and, and, and we're going to have mm. to up our knowledge a little bit on this. But um, uh, I would imagine that um, it would be a little bit like you were saying earlier on with regards to the traveling factor. Yeah. It's a little bit dif more difficult yeah. when you're in the rural areas to get a coach from another town. Yeah. yeah. Because that town yeah. is 200 kilometers away. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think what, what yeah. why also Boland over the last three or four years have had such a strong league is because the coach has been, he, he sort of, when he started out maybe, he didn't have any qualifications, he didn't have the, that knowledge going. But uh, as the years get on, he got to know his players. He sort of picked up from this coach, picked up from that coach, watched the seminar, watched this thing on YouTube. And then he's grown to the point where you have championship sides within Boland that we don't, like you say, we don't ever know about them. But if we see how they play, you go like, hey, hang on, guys. No, Gustav Villager actually is a quite nice team. You know, Sierras, yeah. Darling, you know, you have top guys playing at these clubs. And I, and I think also what makes uh, the Boland clubs also so such a tight fit uh, community where they are based. Uh, it's just that they've, they've got the they've got the formula. Yes, maybe the proximity thing is an issue, but I don't. I don't I've never seen a player leave a Boland club club to come play in province at, at so-called greener pastures that hasn't returned back to his club to give back. I mean, I can think of many players um, yeah. that that have gone back either to coach or to just play play again, and, and they've done good, and, and that's why the Boland League is such a competitive league. Well, it certainly looks like things are um, uh, ticking along their season starting pretty soon in the Bonnet area. Uh, right, folks, if you want to win yourself a case of Score Energy Drinks, and we will be speaking to the chairperson of Robertson, Frederick Crowcamp, in a second or so. But if you want to win yourself a case of Score Energy Drinks, right, you can do that right now by grabbing your mobile phone and just SMSing the word SCORE to 33090. 33090. It's very easy, um, and you can put yourself in the mix there to win a case of Score Energy Drinks. Congratulations to last week's winner, Tanya Reineke. Tanya walks away with a case of score energy drinks. And for those of you that might have just forgotten that number now, just simply download the Cape Rugby TV mobile app. And on there you will find the SMS button. Um, in addition to many other interesting, um, um, uh, uh, fun things to do on the Cape Rugby TV app, like for example the videos, there's some news on there. Um, the Super Brew is on there. There's the Spot the Ball competition. That comes up a little bit later. But right in the middle there, you will see there's the button that says um, SMS. And if you push on that, uh, it opens the number for you. And you simply need to put in the word score and push send. And it will go straight through for you. So if you have forgotten the, the short code number, which is 33090, then it's very easy. Let's speak now to the chairperson of Robertson, Frederick Crowcomb. And when we come back after the break, We'll speak to the guys uh, from St. George's, like Manny Williams, as well as uh, the coach at St. George's, Tarleton Clutter. Um, and uh, we'll be looking forward to hear what the St. George's boys have to say. Man, we also beer to make our rugby club a family. And then, we have to try to make us all in the name of Jesus. We have to try to make God the foundation of our rugby club. To make. We are so far gegaan om voor ons BOC span begin speel as a opnoming gebed begin met 'n skriflesing en gebed dis om om God die fondasie van ons klub te maak verstaan jy nou die 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 woord sê as as God die huise bou nie dan vergees bou die bouer en dis hoe kom ons bring vir God in want ons wil die jaar 2018 wil ons die jaar van Robinson Rugby van Robinson Town maak glo dê vir my dis dis 'n kwart wat gewoonlik by ons rugby klub kom ek gaan vir jou nooi as ons ligas game begin, dan is ons vol, as ons, as ons 
paviljoen vol, reg rondom die veld, reg rondom. Ons het man, ons het gesê, 2018, as ons, rugby, as ons Robinson sy rugby, sy jaar, ons het tot 2016, na Birkom semifinals, 2017, as ons die final gehaal, toe vir ongelukkig uit te val, maar 2018, so ons, ons elke jaar, gaan ons een bykie beter, bykie beter, 2018 is ons jaar. Get down to Dulux Maitland for color matching and free assessments where we meet all your paint and contract requirements. We offer fast tinting turnaround time, free delivery and on-site assessments tailor-made to your contract or domestic specifications. Our staff are highly skilled at writing site specs to help you offer your client the best service. Our Dulux Rock Grip range is cost-effective and comes with a seven-year guarantee on all Dulux Rock Grip products. Visit us at 30 Kuburg Road, Maitland and you could win a contractor's trailer valued at 15,000 Rand. Color Tone is to wood what a good moisturizer is to skin. Tried and tested, Color Tone is the ideal timber treatment for all timber. From windows to doors, decks to floors, chairs to stairs, Color Tone is your timber treatment of choice. When you see what a great job Color Tone does with wood, you may be tempted to use it on your skin, but don't. Ask for Color Tone at your nearest hardware store. Preserving your wood, protecting our children. Color Tone, the ultimate lead free timber treatment for all wood. Uh, welcome back, everybody. Of course, uh, Frederick Crowcamp there, the um, uh, coach at um, uh, um, uh, Robertson. And uh, well, they're very excited. And they say 2018 is the year for Robertson. Um, they certainly are, are pushing it there in their third friendly already. So. They definitely, uh, of course, the chairperson. Sorry, at um, at um, uh, Robertson, and, and 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 we must say to those clubs that are outside of Cape Town and understanding the challenges that the Cape Town clubs have at the moment with regards to uh, the water restrictions. Obviously, very grateful for them uh, doing that. Now, one of the folks that you must know is an absolute legend in the world of Western Province Club Rugby. He, everybody knows who he is. Everybody talks to him all the time and he's very vocal on Facebook. And I've always labeled him probably as Western Province Club Rugby's number one gentleman. If there was ever a movie called The Officer and a Gentleman, I would have made a movie called The Rugby Player Gentleman. Something to that effect. I'm just making things up in my head as I go along here. Let's speak now to St. George's player, Manny Williams. Het is een stapje geweest, we hebben wat is verwacht. We hebben hier weer gaat de factor spelen. Maar ik denk dat dit is wat is voorbereid voor. We hebben voor zo'n skaar gespeeld. We hebben wel een type bol, een game gespeeld wat Robbins en Tienus gespeeld hebben. En ik denk dat we het bijgeleerd hebben dat het een bijge goede game is. Ik denk dat we het te vinnig te wijd proberen te spelen. En ik denk dat uh, Robbins en die, 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 die factoren beter uitgebreid Hij heeft een, een bijge weier gespeeld met die weerfactoren. Zo so heeft dus, hij een beetje gebrand naar die, na, na die punten toe. Bijge goed, we zijn weer naar punten toe. Ongelukkig die weer in die veel te staan en die oefen leid, dat laat ons een beetje uh, momentum verliezen. Verloor. Maar ons gaan in de richting en ons het ons eie speciale oefening wat ons ingaan. En ons, ons kijk in die rechte richting. Harder weer, stamina, uit te veel moe en ik denk ons gaan een beetje klibbaar weer. Kort zal men ons praat maandag. So when you speak to Manny Williams, he speaks rugby. Uh, that's the language he speaks. Um, I don't know if you guys were managed to, managed to hear everything, but uh, Lyndon, you obviously know Manny intimately. Um, Junaid, I think you know Manny as well. Involved. I wouldn't say intimately. Intimately, <laughs> <laughs> no, <not laughs> intimately as Lyndon. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, Manny, yeah. Manny is one of those, one of those hey, guys. I'm still like getting to my question. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> go for it. I, in but, fact, when it comes to, I don't need to ask anymore because you, <laughs> you know where we're going. <laughs> but but like, like you said earlier, and you, and, you, and you coined that thing perfectly when you said the true gentleman and the rugby player. I think Manny is one of those guys. He's tough on the field. Like you don't want to face him as an opponent. Uh, Manny gets in your head verbally. He'll, he'll, he'll break you down as a player <laughs> psychologically. Um, but then off the field, he's this wonderful and amazing, uh, amazing man. You know, and I think Manny is one of those guys that all, always pushes the brand, first of all, of Cape Rugby, which is important. The platform that Cape Rugby uh, offers to, to the clubs. And then also just general clubs like Manny has played at Hands and Arts. He's played at Montague. He's from Montague. So he's played at, he started at Montague. So he knows the ins and outs. He knows the ins and outs of, of Poland Rugby. Manny knows Manny perseverance in Montague. I think Manny has uh, played at Hands and Arts. He, he was at Salodians for many years when they came through the, the, the zones in the, the Super Leagues. And then now it's in Georges. And every year, Manny decides to retire, but Manny, Manny never gets that far. I think yeah. every year, someone just gives him a new pair of boots and he just keeps on playing. You reckon, um, you know, you reckon 
that, that, that you, you, you were wondering when he's going to hang up his boots at some yeah, stage? Yeah, no, I, I, I saw it on Facebook uh, <laughs> that he's retiring. He does and every year, yeah. He comes back and, <laughs> and hang up his boots. And he had yeah. a haircut as well. Like, yeah, he, he had, had a haircut. Yeah. He, had, he, had the, he had the Addis of Vienna. Yeah. Look. yeah. <laughs> no, well, fantastic stuff. But folks, talking about boots, um, is if it is rugby boots that you need, and you certainly do need them because, as we say, the rugby carries on and doesn't matter whether you're in Cape Town, Borland, um, Esviadio, or anywhere else in the rest of the country, if you need sporting apparel, then www.savesasport.com is the place to go to. Um, 20% discount on all of your apparel at um, the, uh, the website www.savesasport.com. From Puma to Mizuno to Canterbury to New Balance and Essex, they've got a fantastic range of equipment. 20% off everything online from rugby boots to footwear and apparel. And remember, um, there's a free delivery in, anywhere in South Africa above 750 uh, rand. Um, we will speak to SA Sport and keep that coupon code alive. So just go online, you get 20% off, and you just put in that coupon code Cape Rugby TV. All right, so it's very easy. Um, nowadays, you you don't really need to go to a shop. You can just go online and get it for you. And of course, uh, uh, fantastic for Cape Rugby TV to partner with Save um, SA Sport. So good discounts there, and that's of course what you want: is quality products at a fantastic price, 20% off. Um, uh, Junaid, would you recommend shopping online nowadays? Look, no, you're, you're quite I, a guru. I, I no, 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 you've got to hold your, hold your, hold your, hold your horses. We, we don't want, we, we just, you've been involved in, in, in business for a long time. You understand yeah. the concept of business. Shopping online, I mean, I went online to try and buy a pair of jeans today, yeah. and I couldn't, well, I decided, I eventually gave up, and I thought, okay, I'm going to go back to Canal Walk because I need to buy a pair of jeans. Uh, but um, uh, would you recommend shopping online? Look, definitely. I mean, the it's the world's changing, and uh, we see we see retail stores are actually struggling because of uh, the online space. I yeah. mean, we see a lot of online stores uh, coming up, and it's just it's it's more convenient, especially with you know guys are busy, you're working, you don't always have time, and yeah, you get something delivered right to your door. Is um, well, I was going to ask you, is it that convenient? I mean, and when when one says yeah. delivered to your door, do, is it do people now are they delivering to your door to your business? Um, Look, obviously you you decide what address, but they literally they'll knock on your door, they'll give you your box, you'll open it up, and there you have it. And you got your boots, and, and you you've got, a got your boots, well. and you get a discount, and as you well. get the discount. But I think the wives are, are the gurus. Uh, Women shopping, and, you know, they shop and it comes in and it's packets, and then they send off the stuff back because they <laughs> ordered a whole lot of stuff because it was on sale that they didn't need. Yep. Uh, go and watch a movie called The, <laughs> yeah, the We intern. go and we buy our the boots <laughs> and our... Go and watch a movie called The Intern. There's nothing more dangerous <laughs> than a person sitting behind a TV screen uh, or behind a laptop with a glass of red wine and a credit card. Yeah. All right? And uh, <laughs> you don't know what's going to happen at the end of the month. Uh, listen, we have to now uh, speak to St. George's coach, Charlton Clitter. Thank <laughs> Um, het kan misschien, misschien wanneer je weet het ook zo geweest het, maar ons zou niet ons, ons, onze Engelman zijn, ons execution moet recht gaan, gaan, gaan krijgen. Ja, ons het, ons, het, ons het natuurlijk onze plannen gaan doen voor, voor onze wedstrijden, maar met die, met die droogte en die kaap is ons alles achteruit gezet. Jullie kan zien als we nou, als we nou Poland toe komen voor onze vriendschappelijke wedstrijden. So. Um, dan was mijn plan volgende week om te spelen in Kelsrevier, maar ons weet nou nog eens aan die week kijken wat ons kan doen. En dan die week daarna, denk ik, is de derde. Um, gaan ons weer Rosenveld toe om, om daar te spelen. So, ons kijk maar om, 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 ons, om ons wedstrijden in die boelak te krijgen. Ik denk dat is de makkelijkste manier. Uh, welcome back everybody. Um, Charlton Clutter, he's uh, still in the mix. He's still playing hungry rugby. <laughs> yeah, very much so. And I think, uh, I think the, the match really uh, uh, sort of sh showed them exactly where, where they are at, gauging, gauging their level. I think the scoreline at this point uh, isn't really that uh, that important. Towards the start of your season, then it does play a factor in the morale boosting of your players. But I think if it's your first friendly, your, the scoreline should really not not, not um, influence your your thinking. 
Um, I think the plan of, of St. George's for the day was executed well. Obviously, there's a few areas we're going to work on. Uh, I think Charlton and Mirwan uh, at, at St. George's, they're doing, they're doing a very fantastic job in this uh, preseason. All right. Well, um, I love that attitude because the bottom line is if you're a sports person, you train to win. You never go into a boxing ring with the intention of losing. Uh, you give it 100% all the time, and that includes friendly matches. So I think that's uh, the right attitude to, to have. Uh, folks, we are going to take a look uh, when we come back at the activity grid. I know Junaid and the guys have got some plans already for this weekend, but they've also got a alternative and additional plans. And that is what we're looking for from club rugby administrators at the moment. If you're out in the club, what else can you do at your club? Because now, finally, you're going to have to start thinking out of the box. It's not just smooth sailing anymore. In fact, there's no sailing because there's no water. We'll be back after the break. <laughs> Get down to Dulux Maitland for color matching and free assessments where we meet all your paint and contract requirements. We offer fast tinting turnaround time, free delivery and on-site assessments tailor-made to your contract or domestic specifications. Our staff are highly skilled at writing site specs to help you offer your client the best service. Our Dulux Rock Grip range is cost-effective and comes with a seven-year guarantee on all Dulux Rock Grip products. Visit us at 30 Kuburg Road, Maitland and you could win a contractor's trailer valued at 15,000 Rand. Color tone is to wood what a good moisturizer is to skin. Tried and tested, color tone is the ideal timber treatment for all timber. From windows to doors, decks to floors, chairs to stairs, color tone is your timber treatment of choice. When you see what a great job color tone does with wood, you may be tempted to use it on your skin, but don't. Ask for Color Tone at your nearest hardware store. Preserving your wood, protecting our children. Color Tone, the ultimate lead free timber treatment for all wood. Uh, welcome back, everybody. It's Cape Rugby TV. It's Wednesday night, and we keep talking about what's happening in the world of Western Bromwich Club Rugby. Now, we've spoken about this for for a while now. We, in fact, we are going to take a look at the Western Promise Rugby's activities. They've got 15 courses, 17 courses coming up still during the, during the course of the year. There's a number of courses and I really do encourage any Western Promise Club Rugby administrators to get their, their coaches or wannabe coaches, even referees, to, uh, to make sure that they pay attention to the coaching, the strength conditioning courses, the 15 courses and 17, uh, 15s and 7s rugby courses and get yourself in the mix um, and, and go to these courses so that while you have this window of opportunity, um, you can, um, uh, uh, you know, upskill yourself. You've got time on your hands now. And I think really the things like referees, box smart, coaching, strength and conditioning, more of that. Let's quickly take a look at our activity grid. So on our activity grid, which we've been talking about this, and Junaid, you, you weren't with us last week, but we know that you already are thinking out the box. If we look at the activity grid, what we asked is on our Facebook page, um, we asked that you go to our Facebook page and comment on, on, on which potential activities you have so that we can make sure that Club Rugby is staying active. In fact, I'm starting to think about changing that name to Staying Alive. We will turn it into the John Travolta show. Uh, <laughs> travel to play. You see, gentlemen, the humor. The absolute we humor. We have to laugh, man. We have to laugh. Well, you know, you laugh we, do you want to invite us back to the show? So we have right. to laugh, man. You've got to laugh. you got to laugh. So I'll, make, you laugh. I'll make sure you've got one of these shirts. Yeah. Thank, you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. You. Okay, so let's go back to our activity yeah. grid here. Um, what we asked is on Facebook, travel to play, um, gym workouts, functional training, martial arts, video sessions, community activities, team jogs, beach training, and yoga sessions. At the moment, what we are seeing is A1. Uh, we're seeing uh, the, um, the option to go travel to uh, play. Um, and now travel to play is one, one of the things, things we've already started focusing on. The teams going, um, and for example, St. George's to um, St. George's went to play in Robertson. Um, travel to play has become an option. Let's quickly look at some of the results of the other friendlies uh, of teams that went away over the weekend. Also made an effort to find a venue to go and play. Um, there we see on the screen right now. Uh, uh, St. Lorian's uh, traveled to Botrafir. They uh, went down to Botrafir, 47 points to 7. Strand United went across to Hrabo, not too far to travel, 22-19. Whistling Wheels, they made the effort to travel to Hopefield, 38-20. They went down. All Saints went down to Montague, but All Saints also went to travel. And then Strand played against Mariasburg. St. George's, as you know, played against Robertson. Young Stars, uh, well, they played against Thistles, although I'm not sure exactly where they played because those are two Western Province sides. And then... Um, Police traveled to uh, um, Valiersdorp, and then Young Wesleys went all the way up to Friedenburg, um, and then Belleville.
played against Vestbank over the weekend. Junaid, you guys um, from Vineyards, you are traveling um, to Roses this weekend, which is not too far from Paul. Yeah. Uh, we're playing Roses in Wellington, and that game was confirmed like two days ago. So right. obviously, uh, we're also looking to, to get gains. And then on the 10th of March, we're traveling to Marmersbury. We're playing Vestbank. So right um, now, in terms of the activity grid, um, you've chosen A1 as, as one of the options. Um, travel to play, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm sure you've got... So we've got Roses yeah. for you this weekend, and you say you've got... Um, 10th of March, we've got uh, Face Bank in Marmersbury. So you've got a break um, next week, the third. You've got a break. Yeah, oh, look, we had, we had a game, yeah. uh, but, uh, but we were supposed to play Busy up. Bees yeah. on the third, but obviously we can't play on the field. So, so right now, you've, you, and you've, you've taken this decision to play yeah. away games to keep the activity yeah. alive, to keep your boys yeah. going, give them game time, make sure that you keep your membership alive at your club. Definitely, yeah. Look, that's, that's obviously the plan, and if you look at the grid uh, that's up on the screen here, um, the only two things in that that we're not doing is martial arts. <laughs> All right, well, we can fix that one. All right, that, one, that one's easy to fix. And the yoga session. Okay, so that means you are... So, yeah. so let's run through some of that stuff yeah. that you're talking about. So you're doing functional training, um, and you are doing video sessions, community activities, team jogs, beach training, yoga sessions. Um, just yeah. tell us a little bit more about, about your activity at, uh, at the clubs. Yeah. Look, obviously, with the, with the gym workouts, uh, a lot of the guys are... are they gym at the Virgin Active in Paul, yeah. uh, so the guys decide what, what time they're going to get together. And, you know, there's another facility uh, that, that's coming up soon. So the Oaks get together, they gym at the same time, and, you know, they, they work, work out there. Um, <clears throat> I know the captain, uh, I think it's tonight, uh, he told the guys to get together somewhere and they're going to go for a jog, yeah. uh, you know, around the Berg River Boulevard. Have, have, you, as a, have you as a club taken the active de the decision that you've got to keep your membership yeah. alive? No, no, we, we, we definitely have to. And I mean, that's why we've got a whole plan that, that we're moving forward with. We're going to um, bring the guys through to town uh, to do a beach session. Obviously, we're not as close to the beach as some of the other Can't guys. Don't you have a dam session out there? No, yeah, the dams the are dry. Session. <laughs> yeah, the dams are dry. <laughs> river the river the dams are dry and the river is also dry. You can do other things. You can probably yeah. go mountain biking or mountain running. Yeah. You guys yeah. got mountains out there in the park? Look, we do. So obviously, great that picking. Uh, Mass great picking. we Beautiful. were out in Montague two, two or three weeks ago on, on a camp. So we yeah. stayed over the Saturday night and the Oaks went hiking in the mountains. Yeah. They did a 5K jog. Mm. Uh, you know, we want to bring the guys through to the Sports Science Institute, hopefully, and do some testing. Um, you know, there's quite a few things. We want to also do uh, another camp, hopefully. Uh, it's, it's tough, JP, but, you know, we... We, we've got to look at what you're thinking out the box to yeah. keep yeah. the guys active. I mean, you yeah. don't want to lose membership and you understand that your job as a club is yeah. to serve the community. Yeah. Oh, we also we also playing in some uh, soccer tennis side. Fantastic. There's, a, there's another thing. What about cross sports? Just all these things. Go swimming, swimming, go to athletics. And, yeah. There's athletics tracks running. Take yeah. There's so much you can do. Yeah. Not swimming really. I don't know. Where they well, okay, maybe not swimming. Yeah. <laughs> swimming, okay, bad. Okay. I, oh, yeah. there, I slipped up there. But, but what, I, what, 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 is, what, what is very inspiring to hear is that uh, you know, clubs like Vineyards and many other clubs are taking the responsibility on themselves yeah. to keep their players active and player membership, especially in the Western Province uh, setup. Clubs are so such, such so much in a small vicinity that you tend to lose players quite easily. And uh, and right now, a player will migrate to a club that is the most active. So whether it be a beach jog, whether it be a camp, whether it be a cross sport activity, whether it be a jog, whether it be whatever it is, yeah. if there's an activity at a club, I think players right now they will migrate to that club, and you'll find your clubs where it's all about the playing in the 80 minutes, those clubs will, will have to think something out of the box. And I think these administrators will have to come to the party and realize, hey, hang on, guys, we're going to lose our players here if we don't do what the other club is doing down the road because these players will leave our club and there's nothing we can do about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, uh, uh, athletes, members, youngsters, they want activity. They want to stay busy. They want to be fit. They want to be healthy. They want to hang around with their friends. Um, it's it's not it's a there's a lot more to running a club than just 80 minutes around a field and it's fantastic to see that a lot of the clubs are coming up with all of these creative ideas um let's quickly look at some of the activities coming up this weekend then of course um in uh, Vestbank there is uh, the sevens and uh, we know that the western province rugby academy is in fact playing at uh, um, um the, the sevens in i think in marmersbury so um 
I think Anton Willman and his guys will be will be out there. Um, there is the uh, well. There's so much happening over the weekend. In fact, and we're going to take a look at the at the scores in a, a second or so. So the Western Province Rugby Academy is out there. So a lot of activity happening uh, certainly in in Marmers Breeze weekend. Um, let's quickly take a look at some of the other activities that uh, is also um, happening over the weekend. Go. Oh, there's a Tigerberg. Um, uh, as known by the celebrities as Tigerberg RFC. Um, uh, there's a family picnic and a whole lot of activity there at Tigerberg RFC. Um, the Rockets is there, Paxton is there, um, and of course, um, uh, Youngster CPT, if I got that right. Good Up FM, my old radio station, is going to be there live broadcast outside on the day, outside live broadcast. So uh, that's at, uh, this coming at, at Tigerberg RFC. At Tigerberg RFC. Mm -hmm. Right, so Tigerberg RFC, make sure you get down there. Good Up FM is going to be there. Paxton is going to be down there. So everybody knows Paxton. In fact, when she was hitting the charts, uh, everybody was super, super excited to, to talk about um, Paxton and get them out there. So the guys at Tigerberg, making sure that there's lots of um, um, events for the public to come to. So it's an event there uh, for, the, for the public th th that they can come and attend there. All right, so let's take a look at some of the Western Province rugby activities coming up um, over the next couple of um, months. On the 23rd of uh, February, we'll see the uh, Western Province um, World Rugby uh, Sevens courses. That's on the 23rd of February. These courses run out during the course of the year, folks. So the Sevens courses on the 23rd of February, the 25th of May, the 14th of July, and then on the 12th of October. Remember, you need to get uh, your entries in pretty much a week or so before so the 19th, the 18th of May, etc. Um, and then there's, of course, the World Rugby Sevens course, Level 2. That'll happen on the 7th of 8th of September. So lots of time to get yourself in the mix there. Um, then there's, of course, the 15s coaches courses um, that will be coming up on the uh, 2nd of March, uh, then the 9th of March, the 20th of April, the 18th of May, the 27th of July, the 31st of August, then there's September, October, November. All of these, these are going to be happening at um, Newland. So get your, yourself in the mix there as quickly as possible. And then the strength and conditioning courses that are coming up. The first course will be on the 21st of March. And then again on the 28th of March and on the 4th of April. All of those courses will be taking place at the High Performance Center in Belleville. And then just a reminder, it's the Western Province Rugby, um, or at least the Western Province League Players Reunion. Uh, that's coming up on the 24th of February at 11 o'clock at the Helderberg Rugby Club. And you can get all of Aubrey Noble there on 073-625-3294 to find out more about uh, what is that's happening with the reunion. Right, quickly, folks, finally, it is, of course, opportunity for you to spot the ball and win yourself this H7S High Sense Infinity Pure Shot. All right, you want to spot the ball. Um, congratulations to last week's winner, Jock Thompson. Jock, somebody from Cape Rugby TV is going to get in touch with you. You are this week's High Sense Infinity, or not Infinity Pulse, but the H7S Pure Shot winner. Folks, if you want to stand a chance to win this phone in the same way that Jock just won it, um, then you need to go and spot the ball on our app. It's the only place you can win it is you've got to go download the Cape Rugby TV mobile app and enter the competition. Um, and uh, you put yourself in the mix to go. And there's the app on my phone right there. And you go and do the spot the ball competition. And uh, right, let's take a look at the grid. And you see the opportunity to win, um, to to enter into that competition. Um, a little bit difficult. A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3, C1, C2, and C3. Those are your options. Go and answer it on the mobile phone, um, uh, Cape Rugby TV app. Remember, that app you can download on um, iTunes or on Google. And they're going into that competition. It puts up in the mix to win this high sense phone. Don't forget our score energy drinks competition, double three oh nine oh. Junaid, um, good luck for the weekend. Uh, Roses, I'm sure you're going to have your work cut out for you. Yeah, it's tough. I, when I saw that result, there's not one Western Province club that beat a Borland club. Very, I, thought, I saw you there, looking at that. There, there wasn't one uh, Western Province Australian team United. that... Australian United won, Krabo. Jabes, thanks for having me. And uh, I just hope that we get some innovative ideas to, to keep club rugby going. And, you know, the clubs all pull together and, yeah. you know, unite and realize that we're all in this together. Renzo? Uh. Yes, here, here we, go. we go. Here we go. <laughs> you're on a roll tonight. You're on, a, you're on a roll tonight. Uh, your, joke, your jokes are on point. You've got, uh, you've got the names the all wrong. The credits are running. Right, so the credits are the wrong. The credits you're, are running. There we go. Your prompt was wrong. You should blame Lyndon for it. Um, <laughs> but thanks for having me. It's always good. Uh, all of the best, all the clubs playing, Bulland and Western yeah. Province. And it's, it's, very, it's, it's, it's very heartwarming to see that uh, the two unions are coming up with ideas. 
that um, the, the administrators on the ground level are coming up with creative ideas. So definitely looking forward to a good and a fantastic yep. Club Rugby weekend. That's a wrap, folks. Cape Rugby TV, of course, uh, uh, live every Wednesday night. We'll see you again next week. Same time, same place. And as always, have a fantastic rugby weekend. But this time, remember, save water everywhere. Go to the Facebook page. Give us your water-saving suggestions. See you next week. Bye-bye.